How about we go next levelish as we continue to look at the NBA playoff picture and the action that's ahead on Sunday. The Boston Celtics aren't known as a great shooting team, but their percentage gets even worse in the playoffs, going 25% from deep two years ago, 27% against the Hawks last year. Tim, do you think the Celtics' poor perimeter shooting will hinder them against the Chicago Bulls? Yes, I think that's a very real possibility. Hey, when your best player is five foot nine, five foot ten, it, no offense to the guys that are five foot nine or five foot ten. My bad. But they're easier to guard, and you know that they're going to game plan to stop Isaiah Thomas. So, is Jay Crowder going to be able to beat you for four games? Is Avery Bradley going to be able to beat you for four games? If I'm Fred Hoiberg, every opportunity I can get to get the ball out of Isaiah Thomas' hands, I'm going to go do that. So, you know, the Celtics. Let's call. Let's call them what they are. They're a very solid team. They're not a great team. I know they're the number one team in the Eastern Conference, but they're not a great team. You wouldn't say that they're like All Star, All Star, Hall of Famer. Like, yeah, I mean, they, Al they, Horford they, is they, a perennial All Star. Yeah, but they don't Thomas have a Hall of Famer on their team. No, no, I wouldn't go that far. So, go that far. Um, yeah, that'd be a real fear of mine if I'm a Celtic. Like, what happens when you're not making threes? Yeah. All right, how are you going to get other buckets? Because Al Horford's not just a throw it down type of big guy. Not just go there and get they like, don't jump have hooks and stuff. Amir Johnson, that you're not getting points in the paint for him. Kelly Olynyk, seven feet. He likes to shoot from the perimeter as well. So they don't have a post presence to go inside out. I think it's a very real fear. Now you've noticed over the last three seasons, their shooting percentage has increased in the regular season from three, from 32% now to 36%. That's been almost like a league-wide stat. That's why people are shooting so many threes. Yep. Because they don't shoot 27% from three. Teams are shooting 36, 38, almost 40% from three. And if you do the math, yeah, you're better off taking a three than, well, much better off than taking a long two. But is it a real fear that they struggle from three? Absolutely. Even if they do, though, I still think like this team might be able to get enough stops on the defensive end. If you put a Jay Crowder on a Jimmy Butler, maybe he could slow him down that sort of thing. And then if you can slow down Jimmy Butler, their number one guy, certainly I don't know if you can buy into a Nico Miritich to step up in the playoffs, but Boston will be at home. I think they do have that chip on their shoulder because they hear everybody in the media saying, you know what, the Bulls might be able to knock them off. A eight upset. The one. They hear all that, and I think they the want to go out and prove a point. We'll see if they can get that done tomorrow in game one. How about the other matchup in the East? That would be the Wizards-Hawks. We're going next level on that one. Since the All-Star break, the Hawks have the worst offense in the NBA, scoring just 101 points per 100 possessions. In that same span, the Wizards have the 27th worst defense in the league, allowing 110.7 per 100 possessions. Who do you think has the edge in this matchup? Man, we went real deep here with the numbers, huh? Um, uh, the edge, to me, is just going to be the backcourt here. Uh, and my trust level with the Wizards' backcourt is just so much stronger. When you got Wall and Beal, who I believe are perennial all-stars, um, I, I, I think that you know, from an offensive standpoint, they're solid. But defensively, I think both those guys are electric. I think Bradley Beal is a very solid on-ball defender. I think John Wall is an exceptional on-ball defender. So is Schroeder going to be able to get these guys in their offense? Who's the guy? That's my big worry with the Hawks' offense is, all right, who's the guy? Six on the shot clock. Go get you that bucket. Probably, I would think Tim Hardaway Jr. probably is that guy. Not saying he's reliable, but I, that is your guy. I know. Schroeder's so good off the pick and roll, but okay. he's not a knockdown shooter. I mean, when they played the Bulls in Chicago late in the season, they're down two. Schroeder's not on the floor in the last possession of the game. Now, Paul Millsap, some would say, is their go-to guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I think the Wizards have Morris or Otto Porter. They have guys that can match up with him. I, I think this is a no-brainer. I think this is a sweep. I think, there's, I think there's some close games, but I think the Wizards go out there and sweep the Hawks. Wow. Um, I just don't see that happen. This is like a 4-5 or five matchup. It's amazing that these teams... I think, the, I think the Wizards are a real contender and the Hawks are not. You agree with that? I agree with that, but the Hawks are a team who, when they are playing well, can be very dangerous and therefore... In this series, they're going to have a couple of games where they play to their potential, and that will allow them to avoid getting swept. They'll be, I, I don't think they go at home and lose two in front of the home crowd. I just feel like Bud, uh, Bud Mike Budenholzer is that good of a coach that he'll have them game plan, make the adjustments, that they at least get one. I think the series goes six games. Are you on that level with him, or you just call him Bud? <laughs> you see how that just kind of came out, so to speak? That's all right. No, just do you know? The tongue? No, I, I don't know Mike Budenholzer. But, Bud. Uh, <laughs> Seems like a cool guy, though. Certainly a very good coach. Do you use that one? If you don't know someone's name, you call somebody. Hey, bud. No, yeah. I don't roll with bud. I roll with bro. Hey, bro. Oh, hi, What's bro. happening, bro? 
That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Bro, 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 you ever call a guy chief? I have in the past. Hey, what, what's your go-to on that one? I, I like calling people pal. Do you really? Yeah, hey, pal. That's very 90s yeah. of you. I, I prefer, I like to be called doctor. Hey, doctor! Yeah, I like doctor, <laughs> but I don't get it, Mary. There's a bathroom attendant at Tavern on Rush in Chicago. <laughs> I, I give him extra money if he calls me doctor, but I don't tell him I want to be called doctor. He just does it. Ah, doctor! 